this coat has dried now, it's had 24 hours, and I've got a very, very smooth finish, having put basically two layers of wood filler on it, and then sanded it down, and then two layers of this lovely uh, undercoat. And in fact, I bought a new tin of undercoat, so the first, the first undercoat that went on there was a bit lumpy because it was an old tin, the second coat was very, very smooth. So what I'm gonna do now, is I've got to give this a very, very light sanding down with 1000 grit. So it literally is just to take the nibs off. And because effectively I'm going to be painting a quadrant of this in bright red and a quadrant of this in dark blue, this is an undercoat, it suits the dark blue, but it doesn't suit the red. So what I need to do is I need to mask this thing off, having given it a sand and then mask it off. And then I need to paint the quadrants that are going to be red I need to paint those in white, so that's what you're about to see me do next. This is a few minutes, like 10 minutes after I've, I've painted it. And I've been on the phone to a good friend of mine who's got more experience than I have with painting uh, to ask whether or not I can leave this masking tape on. And it's sort of 50-50. But what I thought we would do is actually pull the masking tape off um, and see the effect that we've been given. And I thought I wouldn't do this in... Um, I mean, that looks like an amazingly sharp edge. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying that. That's beautiful. And then when it comes to masking it again tomorrow. So that was, that was effectively with the grain. So this is now across the grain. Again, I'm, I'm looking at a perfect finish. You know, this would be acceptable if this was on a car on metal. At all. So that's absolutely perfect. There is a minuscule imperfection there, but that really was a masking problem. And you know what, when I was masking it, I saw that the, the physical join between the, the dark color and the light color is just perfect. And absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. I mean, all of it, you know, the, the join down here, the join down here is just magnificent. That gives me a great deal of confidence now to think that the, um, the low tack masking tape idea is, uh, is going to work. I'm expecting the, the gloss to behave differently, but um, so far so good. Second coat tomorrow, so I need to remask this again tomorrow and then put a second coat of white on. So this is the next day and it's dried and you can see why I need to give it a second coat because you can see there where the, the grey is kind of like um, bleeding through. It almost looks like streaks of grey. Obviously as you come back on the camera it looks completely white 
Um, but that's to be expected because you you know you're going over a very dark colour. So bearing in mind, I'm going to put a bright red on top of this. I need to mask all of this up again. Same thing on the other side as well. If I hold the camera still. I bought this masking tape today, which is the lowest tack masking tape that you can possibly get. I think this was about 15 or 16 pounds just for a roll of tape. And the reason that I've gone for it is, is because when uh, I'm, I'm masking this up, it's not really so bad because it's, uh, it's a, um, an undercoat surface. But considering I'm going to be doing this with a gloss coat soon, I need something that's uh, very sensitive to the gloss. Because the last thing I want to do is to affect the shine on it or have to wait an excessive period of time before I mask. So I'm gonna mask up with this and then I'm gonna put a second coat of white on. Second coat is complete. I would say there was a tiny little bit of bleeding just about there. Uh, that's about the only thing I can see which is a bit of an issue. Um, but the rest of it, very clean. And you can see that it's completely opaque now. There's no, there's no sign of the, of the grey beneath it. That's, uh, that's completely opaque. So, Let that dry and then tomorrow um, I think I will mask off the white and then I'll paint the grey areas blue. It's the next day, the white is dried, it's very smooth, uh, any little nibs and bubbles that appeared last night after I'd painted it kind of seemed to have smoothed out and disappeared and as you know from yesterday I bought this um, ultra low tack tape as opposed to this low tack tape and the difference between the two is, is that the pink is as you would expect kind of like pink is a softer color so the pink is a is a lower tack tape and I noticed that or, and I showed you that when we were uh, masking up and putting on a second coat of white we saw just a little tiny bit of bleeding and that, I could probably have avoided that if I had pressed the edge down harder and I thought today well as this is all in undercoat um, I will use this, which is still low tack, but slightly more, uh, slightly more tacky than the pink uh, in preparation for putting the blue on. So, uh, and hopefully that way I should get, uh, I should get uh, a perfect finish. However, when I'm then masking on the blue in order to be able to paint the red, I will have to swap over to the pink, the low tack. So that's my thought, that's my plan. So time now for uh, masking up.
just finished that coat of blue. I think I'm now going to leave it about 10 minutes before I peel the tape off. So another couple of minutes and uh, time to take off the tape. Time to get brave. So the way this tape goes on, that piece of tape is overlapping that piece of tape. So I want to pull that one off first so that I don't try and pull off two bits at the same time. Oh, that looks, that looks good. Obviously the grain goes that way. And it's even coming off a little bit more. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's even coming off slightly differently. It's a bit jerky. much easier to pull the tape off with the grain. So I'm going to do this really slowly. So I'm now going to support it with my fingers so I don't get a splash. And that looks fantastic. That looks absolutely fantastic. Let me show you up close. Really nice. And then there's that tiny little section that you can just see there. And now that was, that, um, that's actually flicked off the masking tape. So um, if I continue straight up, it's just perfect. I mean, really perfect. And then with regards to the sort of the, the horizontal line, uh, it's flawless. And if I lay the camera so you get a sort of a nice look at the middle there, with the exception of that little that little speck that you can see in the three o'clock position, the rest of it looks fantastic. And the colour, oh, I mean, maybe it's difficult for you to see there, but just looking at the shine of the wall, oh my God, that's beautiful. And uh, that is going to be such a beautiful backdrop to the gold. So all I can do now is let this dry. Uh, I'm going to close the door, switch the lights off. I don't want anything to encourage dust. I have got the central heating on, but this room has been cleaned. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm even frightened to sort of uh, talk too loud. I don't want my breath to kick up any dust whatsoever. So as I say, uh, lights off and I'm gonna leave this and we'll give this, I would think, probably three days before we come back and mask it off. Um, and that might even be longer, it depends. And I would say that once this has had, um, or this is skimmed over over a 24 hour period, I'll probably put this in a warmer room in the house where it gets better heat to aid kind of curing the paint because I really want a good firm skin on that paint. And this was just one coat. So, uh, you know, all the preparation that we've put in to be able to get a really good background to this has paid off because uh, I can't see any evidence of uh, the colour bleeding through beneath it. This is just absolutely perfect. And uh, you can imagine with a, a bright gold on top of that, it's going to look very, a very elegant combination of colours. 
and uh, once this is red, uh, that'll, that too will look fantastic. So uh, probably two or three days from now, we'll catch up. It's Monday, which is three days from when this was painted. This was painted on Friday afternoon. And it has got, um, as is always the case with household gloss, you know, you can touch it, but you have to be very careful because it has no strength to it. It's such, such a soft, um, it's such a soft uh, skin that it forms. And I've decided now, um, having spoken to a friend and having read on the internet, that what I was going to do, I was going to leave this as a bit of surprise. Uh, I was going to gold leaf on the uh, the lines and the fleur de lis, and that's still possible, but. Um, in video time it won't make any difference, but in real time it could be as much as six months to wait for this lot to sufficiently dry before I can put the size on it and then the gold leaf in order to put on detailing that I want. Apparently, if you don't let it dry completely, when you put the size on and then stick the gold leaf to it, there's a good chance that the gold leaf will just stick to this because it's such a sticky surface. And the size that you put on, which is effectively like a glue, that can actually have the effect of sealing the surface so that the paint beneath it, which is still soft and still going through the process of hardening, curing, can't do it. So it has a bit of a funny old chemical reaction. Well, um, I thought, well, I'm not going to give up, I'm not going to give up. But what I do want to do is I want to put some kind of mounting system on the back of this. And I should have really thought of this and done this before I put the gloss on. So my way around that is to actually uh, work at this from underneath and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So with the shield now placed on the edge of the work surface, I've got the access to the underneath of it. Obviously on this side here, we've got the blue and on this side, we've got the white. So we can touch this, but we can't touch that. And what I need to do is I need to attach these kind of things really. And if I stick something like that there and the same thing on the other side, I'll have the ability to then run a string between it and then I can hold it from the back, put it onto a wall, and at least over a you know, long period of time it can, it can dry in a dry room, up on a wall, out of the way, and it means I can get on with other things. However, one of the problems that I face is as follows. And here we've got the um, little attachments that we're going to shove on either side of the little brackets that uh, we can then tie string or wire or whatever we need to to hold it. So that's the screw that goes through it. And you can see that if I put that up against an off cut here, you can see I've got very, very, very little space left. So I've got to be very careful how I drill this because the last thing that I want to do is to actually put uh, some kind of bubble on the surface. So the way around that is to measure And that tells me that I need two mil. So I'm going to take a two mil drill. So I can calculate the depth that I need. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape around there so that I don't, I don't over drill it and go too deep. So that little bit of tape around there, that acts as a depth gauge. And also, if I was drilling this in a normal upside down way, you know, like like this, as the tape becomes in contact with the wood, it would blow away any sawdust. If you felt so inclined, you could easily put um, a mechanism on the back of it for being able to hold the shield in your arm. But uh, that really wasn't what I wanted to do. This project was always going to be something that was going to be wall mounted. So for me, this was something that I should have really done in the earlier stages. But um, as you can see, I'm just wrapping around um, some string. And actually, that's builder string that you use for plumb lines. So it's very strong. Very strong. It's now the next day in the morning. So she's now had uh, about, uh, I would say, four days to dry now. And I bought myself uh, a pair of glasses, which are a little bit better. And I've obviously got my low tack masking tape. And on top of that, I've also got um, a Swan Morton surgical blade. And what I thought was, is that uh, yesterday I put a little bit of this masking tape on the blue. 
and even though this is this is very 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 low tack the the lowest tack that there is because this is such a glossy surface the two uh, really help stick to each other and um, when I peeled it off I didn't see any any sort of suggestion or evidence of damage on the blue so I thought to myself because the grain is running down like this I'm going to mask this in such a way that when I have to make a cut to get a nice clean cut I want the cut to be across the grain because that will be easier. If I'm masking along with the grain, then you've got more possibility of the knife following the grain. So I'm going to mask this up now, but with the intention of masking in such a way that I make any cuts in the tape to get sharp edges going across the grain. So time for time lapse. just finished painting and I have noticed that the red is not as opaque as the blue. I can see through the masking um, where the actual edge of the, the, the tape is, so it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't cover as well as the blue. However, the contrast between the red and the blue, that looks pretty good and it's really the, the quality of the, the, the line, the delineating line. So, um, I mean, I have tried to get right onto the edge. I haven't left a little thin strip of blue. It's, it's right up to it, so um, we'll give it 10 minutes and we'll come back and uh, peel off the last container. Here I go. So with grain, it's certainly not as clean. I mean, it's it's okay, but it's not perfect. That's what it would look like if I wasn't to go through all the primer and the undercoating and the filling. That's, that's just plywood painted. So that's with filling and primer. There's a completely different finish. So looking at the horizontal, I can see some very, very tiny amounts of bleed. Just on the northern side there, there's a tiny little bit. It's 
difficult to see in this light, but it, there is a, a minuscule, I mean, it's almost imperceptible amount of bleed from one side to the other, but only visible at very close range. I think that's quite an impressive join there. And as we go up to the top, that's absolutely flawless up there. showed you it uh, up close uh, actually as you stand back you can't really see any imperfections at all it just looks it just looks flawless so this needs to harden this needs to uh, you know skin over so it's time for me to switch the lights off in the room shut the doors I want to keep the dust down and uh, and the next time you see this um, it will have had a considerable period of time to uh, uh, for the paint to cure and then we can go on to the next step which is the fun part which is where we start painting on the gold, fleur-de-lis and the lines. 